new scuba diving app that might help you find your next diving course or career. Uh, the Deep Blue app servers are officially going offline and a brand new behind the scenes footage, uh, or sorry, just brand new behind the scenes footage making of um, James Cameron's The Abyss is set to be released with the new 4K version of the film uh, later on. So first off, yes, Salty Careers has officially launched a beta version of its platform Form, which is a cutting edge tech startup founded by diving enthusiast Lloyd Frampton and Thomas Carden. Salty Careers is set to transform the diving industry by introducing a comprehensive digital platform which allows divers of all types and affiliations to apply for jobs and courses, as well as connect with dive shops and professionals worldwide. Salty Careers platform is a one stop solution for divers, diving organizations, and industry professionals, providing an array of features such as streamlined job searching and hiring process, networking opportunities, and efficient management tools for diving organizations. So it's it's kind of like LinkedIn, but for diving, but also with a bit of like Facebook in there, I, I suppose. Um, the platform also allows users to seamlessly book professional courses, uh, fostering skill development and knowledge enhancement. Frampton expressed his enthusiasm for the venture, stating, we founded Salty Careers to address the long-standing challenges faced by divers and diving organizations. Our platform is not just a technological advancement, it's a revolution in the diving industry, bringing together divers from around the world and creating a seamless experience for all. Chardon, the CTO of Salty Careers added, our goal is to digitize and elevate every aspect of the diving professional from job searches to organizational management. Salty Careers is not just a platform, it's a community driven initiative that aims to connect, empower and advance the diving industry into the digital age. I mean, yeah, I remember back when I was a, um, a, a paddy pro, they had a, um, a dedicated I think they still there. There were some like changes to it recently. I think I read, uh, but they they have this like back end system for professional um, tier divers, and there were like job listings and things um, sort of in that section. I don't remember using it that much. Um, I don't remember like needing to use it that much because I I never really looked for uh, sort of those types of jobs, um, but. Uh, yeah, now uh, we, we have this uh, Salty Careers. For more information, um, you can uh, just head over to saltycareers.com um, and you can also reach out to Lloyd, uh, so that's double L-O-Y-D at saltycareers.com. But that's quite interesting. Um, I'm going to download it and uh, and have a quick look around, see uh, see what it's like. And uh, it's, it's nice to see these uh, like tech uh, entrepreneurs um, like trying to develop things specifically for scuba diving so uh, yeah that is nice to see um on the flip side of it uh, the deep blue app servers are going offline uh, i first caught i can't remember where i saw this uh, somewhere on social media um it's like oh yeah deep blue is um is switching off its servers and i thought oh that's a little surprising um it was it was supposed to be a similar thing to the uh, to the previous article but it was like a like facebook instagram but for scuba divers the uh, the deep blue app and it was described again as a, a community designed for divers to share dive logs and passion for the ocean um the company released a dive computer the cosmic plus uh as another means of promoting and pushing the app um now a message from the homepage of the Deep Blue website states, thank you very much for your trust and support for the past 10 years. With every new year users joining our community, we have more and more load on our servers. At this moment, too few users are willing to pay for the subscription. The company can no longer afford the high server operating expenses. After thorough consideration, the company will take the server offline, but it will not affect the independent use of the linked device, including Including brands such as Sunto or Cosmic, uh, it is strongly recommended that you back up your videos, pictures, and other data as soon as possible. So yeah, if you do use the um, uh, the app and you do have photos that are only uploaded on there, uh, then yeah, it is best to try and get a copy as soon as possible. Uh, I don't think a official date of when they're switching it off is going to be, uh, but. Uh, sooner rather than later if you do have any important information up there um but yeah it, it sounds like if you do use it just as a logbook 
on your phone, then yeah, it should still work. Uh, it just won't have that like social media functions in the background. Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium has announced a partnership with Johnson Outdoors, a leading global innovator of outdoor recreation equipment and technology. Um, you'll probably better know them as today's sponsor, Scuba Pro, uh, is one of Johnson Outdoors' brands, uh, but Johnson Outdoors also has other brands under its umbrella. And together with Scuba Pro, they're aiming to create a community coral reef restoration program that offers divers the opportunity to participate and make a positive difference in the health of our coral reef system. Quote, at Johnson Outdoors, we consider it our responsibility to leave the world a better place and to accelerate our environmental efforts. We are excited to partner with Moat Marine Laboratory to offer divers the opportunity to dive with us and help restore coral reefs, said Helen Johnson Leopold, uh, chairman and CEO of Johnson Outdoors. Coral reefs are the building block of the ocean ecosystem, accounting for 25% of marine life worldwide. We're excited to partner with Johnson Outdoors and Scuba Pro on this program that will bring scale to a program rooted in groundbreaking science, said Dr. Michael P. Crosby, President and CEO of Moat marine laboratory and aquarium. Scuba Pro is partnering with its vast network of ocean conservation conscious brand dealers to organize a series of coral reef restoration events for divers to experience firsthand Moat's science-based research and conservation efforts to protect the oceans we all love and enjoy. During the full day program, participants will learn about coral reef ecology and get a hands-on experience with Moat's leading holistic science-based coral reef restoration methods, including a moat pioneered technique called microfragmentation and reskinning. Sounds ghastly, but yeah. Um, but these um, allow moats to grow thousands of coral fragments on land before planting them onto the reef, stimulating rapid growth at a rate as fast as 50 times that compared to natural coral growth. Participants may also maintain moats underwater coral tree nurseries and plant coral fragments grown in the program out on real ocean reefs. All scuba divers are welcome to join Scuba Pro and Moat for these restoration events, and I'll pop a link down in the description below if you are interested. Hyundai Motor America has announced a partnership with Healthy Seas and Ghost Diving USA, uh, two non-profit organizations dedicated to ocean conservation efforts, mirroring efforts in Europe for the past three years. Hyundai's, or Hyundai, I forget, there was an advert recently telling me how to pronounce Hyundai, um, so their, uh, their support will further Healthy Seas and Ghost Diving USA's diving projects in Southern California to clean the oceans and retrieve fishing nets contributing to marine pollution. Reclaiming fishing nets and other nylon waste collected become Econile, um, which is a regenerated nylon yarn used to make textile products. Uh, you see it in quite a few scuba diving wetsuits nowadays, Econile. Um, they're becoming more and more popular. And yeah, it's by reclaiming this fishing net, they clean it up, they um, they then return it into a, a yarn that you can then turn into, uh, into recycled fabrics, which is pretty cool. Uh, the partnership is also going to enable the organizations to host beach cleanups uh, across California throughout 2024, with the partnership kicking off with a cleanup event that took place at Huntington Beach State Park on the 9th of December. The partnership with Healthy Seas and Ghost Diving USA supports Hyundai Motor Company's commitment to sustainability and global vision of progress for humanity. This focus on the ocean emphasizes the company's efforts to help create more sustainable marine ecosystems and contribute to a circular economy. Randy Parker, the CEO of Hyundai uh, Motor America, ability is a core human value for Hyundai and protecting the world's oceans is of most important. This partnership with Healthy Seas and Ghost Diving USA bolsters our global commitment to creating a more sustainable future for all, advancing Hyundai's global vision of progress for humanity. We particularly look forward to kicking off the expansion to the United States in California and what we can achieve together.
So that's nice to see some of the uh, the bigger brands, uh, the more uh, sort of familiar brands for people who don't scuba dive, are uh, are joining in and trying to clean up our oceans. And uh, yeah, hopefully it will get uh, a few more people aware of ghost gear and uh, and yeah, how to uh, how to clean it up and the uh, and the brave men and women who um, who go out and uh, and actually do clean this stuff up and what we can do with it afterwards. There was an interesting news story on divernet.com. The first proof has emerged that one of the world's biggest sharks is oviviparous, um, which basically means that its embryos grow in eggs nourished by the yolk within the mother before the young sharks hatch and then are born live and independent. Um, Unfortunately, it took a dead specimen of the rarely seen megamouth shark uh, to make this case after a 5.6 meter long megamouth uh, had become pregnant with several pups was found washed ashore in Aurora province in central Luzon in the Philippines in mid-November. The mother and pups um, that had been born and were found beside her were examined under the remote supervision of an expert from Marine Wildlife Watch of the Philippines. Uh, The remaining pups were taken to the National Museum of the Philippines for detailed examination and preservation. Uh, Megamouth sharks are the ones that live, well, as far as I'm aware, uh, live quite deep, deep down. Uh, So we don't see too many of these. So when we do get good samples of them, uh, it is important to uh, to study them as much as possible. The deepwater megamouth shark species was only discovered in 1976. Um, they're typically just over five meters long when fully grown. Uh, females are larger than the males, but it is by far the smallest of the three filter feeding sharks. Um, the others obviously being whale sharks and basking sharks. The Philippines is regarded as its most important habitat after Taiwan, uh, though most reports are of dead specimens uh, that are either being stranded or caught as bycatch. Uh, according to the Sharkman's World blog site, which records all megamouth shark and other sightings. Uh, The one in Aurora was the 284th made today. Uh, Megamouth sharks spend their days at depths typically down to around one kilometer, apparently um, surface feeding only by night. Uh, So yeah, not too many sightings of them. And um, yeah, every time we do spot them, um, then we, uh, we learn something new. Next, we move on to James Cameron's The Abyss. And um, for those of you um, who are aware of the, uh, the behind the scenes, it, um, it, it wasn't the most pleasant of, uh, of movies to, um, uh, to star on. The 1989 thriller was shot almost entirely underwater, requiring its crew and cast to learn how to shoot and act whilst using diving equipment, uh, which many of them were completely unfamiliar. Cameron told Variety that you show up to do a diving movie, you're going to have to dive, says Cameron in a new clip from bonus features accompanying the film's digital release on Tuesday. The only problem is that they don't know how they're going to react to being in a diving helmet until they're already signed a contract and showed up. Following a rare theatrical screening of the extended edition at Los Angeles Beyond Fest in October, Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment announced that Cameron and his Lightstorm partner John Landau had overseen a 4K re- remastering of The Abyss and several other titles from his library for re-release. First, a one-night-only screening of the film in theatres nationwide, then on digital platforms, and finally on disc in March. In a recent conversation with Variety, Cameron said that there was no better way to make the film than by putting the cast and crew through such rigorous preparation ahead of time. The abyss was tough on everybody, he said. It was physically taxing for me and for them. It was a tough shoot. There was no way for me to make it easier on everybody than what it was, other than to just not do it, and that's not my style. In addition to a proper high-definition release of the film, Cameron scoured his vaults for new and unseen archival footage from behind the scenes of the production, featuring the actors getting used to the demands of performing underwater. The clip comes from Deep Dive, a conversation with James Cameron, where the filmmaker reflected on the beginnings of his first waterbound adventure and answers burning questions and corrects some misconceptions about its making. Um, The Abyss joins True Lies and Aliens in 4K Tuesday uh, to be followed in physical formats on March 12th next year. Uh, You can watch the footage 
featuring a 2023 interview with James Cameron in the link below. Yeah, from what I've heard, um, it was it was a tough, tough film uh, for everyone involved, and and a lot of setbacks, and a lot of things went wrong. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's just going to be interesting to see um, sort of what new behind the scenes footage is uh, is being released with the uh, the new digital version, and what corrections he may have to uh, to some misconceptions. Apparently, um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll definitely be watching it. So yeah, this week the podcast is sponsored by Scuba Pro, and uh, and right now they have a free Octo offer running up until the end of December this year. Uh, so if you're in the market for a new set of regulators, you can really save yourself some money. Um, you can get a free R105 Octo or a S. 270, which is their newer version, um, with the purchase of selected Scuba Pro regulator system online or at participating Scuba Pro dealers. The promotion may not be available in all regions, so double check before you go stomping into your Scuba Pro dealer and demand a free Octo. Um, and it's limited to one free Octo per order. The S270 Octo, uh, you get free whenever you get the Mark 25 D420. The Mark 19 with the D420, or the Mark 25 or Mark 19 with the S620 Ti uh, in a clamp or DIN. Doesn't matter if you buy any of those four regulators, uh, you get a S270. Uh, with the R105, if you get the Mark 25, uh, or the Mark 17 with the S600, the Mark 25 or the Mark 19 with the G260, or the Mark 19 Evo Black Tech or the Mark 25 Evo Black Tech with the G260 Carbon Black Tech, both in A clamp or DIN, you get the R105 Octo. Uh, so they're all really solid regulators. Uh, the D420, D420 looks a little bit different, but it's actually, it breathes really nice. They've kind of lowered the um, the diaphragm, and technically it is a really nice breathe uh, in more angles. So technically it's a really nice regulator. It just looks a little bit different. Um, the S620 Ti is a strong all-rounder. It's, it's literally an all-rounder. It has like the best features of a few of their regulators, like the A700, the S6, uh, S600, and I think some of the G260, they, they kind of took and, uh, and cherry picked certain features of each of them and like molded it into a, a one like combination second stage. Uh, so that's very popular. And the TI stands for titanium because it's got titanium parts on the inside, makes it a little bit lighter, but also corrosion resistance. Um, S600 and the G260 are very similar second stages. Um, the S600 is like the pretty version, whereas the G260 is like the like, Know technical version, um, but on the inside, very, very similar. Uh, it is more the, the styling on the outside, uh, and then you basically just pick your, uh, your first stage. You've got the Mark 25, which is like their flagship, um, really nice. Uh, you've got the uh, the Mark 19, which is their newer diaphragm. It's a um, it's like a diaphragm version of the Mark 25, which is a piston. Uh, the Mark 17. Is their like classic diaphragm workhorse, and then of course the uh, the carbon black tech. It just has that PVD coating, so uh, so it's got the a black look to it, but it's also a bit more scratch resistance. And usually the, uh, the second stage has a carbon fiber front cover, which is pretty cool. But yeah, check out your your local Scuba Pro dealer, pop them a visit, and uh, and double check, make sure they're um, they're signed up for this. But yeah, you can get yourself a free Octo up until the end of the year. Not a great deal as far as new diving equipment. Uh, we're definitely in our in our quiet season uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, yeah, not a lot of stuff is being announced or released that at least I've spotted on uh, on social media. Um, so having a quick look through some Ask Mark questions. Uh, the first one from the previous week comes from Kyle Fleming 2171. And Kyle asks, uh, I'm trying to find a good base layer. I'm not sure which brand to look at. I'm waiting on a Santee light suit. I presume that means 
e light suit uh, to come in and have a good under suit. I'm hoping to find a lightweight suit that wicks weight and sweat, sorry, and, uh, and moisture away. Planning on diving year round in the UK and Irish waters, but if I was abroad and the opportunity to dive was there, I would wear it under a wetsuit as well. Um, is there anything suitable or would I need two different types of layers? Any suggestions? Um, I mean, ideally, yes, two separate layers, but there are undersuits that work both dry and wet. My first thought goes to Fourth Elements uh, Thermocline and uh, Shark Skin. Uh, I think Shark Skin's just the uh, the brands. I, I I only ever know it as, as shark skin. I know they have a few different types of shark skin, um, but it is very similar material. Um, lava core, if they still make lava core, uh, that was like a Hewish brand, I, I believe. Um, or I think did um, did Hewish take them over with uh, with Oceanic and Hollis? I forget. Um, yeah, lava core, and I want to say Mara's did one. I think it's Ultra Skin. I think that's similar to uh, to Fourth Element Thermocline, and yeah, they're, they're designed as a neoprene alternative, so it, it does keep you warm when it's wet, but you can use it under a, um, a dry suit as well. It's not as good, it's not really what it's made for, but it will still keep you warm, um, so yeah, yeah, that's definitely an option, um, but yeah, a, a proper dry suit undersuit and a, a base layer would be better at keeping you warm they're, they're specifically designed to uh, to keep you um to give you that insulation that uh, that keeps you that little bit warmer so uh, that would be my recommendation um sunny d says i want to switch to a long hose primary donate setup and i'm working uh, sorry, correction, I'm wondering if it's common for the backup second stage around your neck to leak bubbles or worse, free flow. My Octo that I keep in a plastic bulb regulator holder has a nasty habit of leaking bubbles uh, in my current setup. It does tend to hang with the mouthpiece facing upwards, uh, so maybe that's why I'm having issues, yep, uh, and therefore concerned about free flows, and I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to have both regulators calibrated and tuned, but I figured I'd ask. Um... I mean, it's always going to be an issue with second stages. Um, downstream regulators are designed to uh, to just give you gas if it thinks that you're you're taking a breath. Um, if it's in the like bubble, like uh, thing that you pop your mouthpiece in, and it holds onto just the mouthpiece. Um, that could be one of the issues because with a second stage, as soon as it it, if it's full of air and it's upside down with the mouthpiece pointing upwards and then you submerge it, it's going to free flow. If you gently fill it with water first and then invert it, it shouldn't free flow. Um, it's it's all about the, the water pressure on the outside and the air on the inside. Um, so it, it may just be your, um, uh, your, your octo holder, basically. Um, when it's around your, uh, your neck, it typically lives in a, a necklace, so the, the second stage is, or the mouthpiece is open to the water, so water can get in and um, and flood it. It is an issue, um, but most second stages that you have at that point typically have both a Venturi and a breathing adjustment knob. So whenever a second stage is out of my mouth, the Venturi switch um, gets switched to the uh, to the less efficient um, version, um, some some manufacturers call them like pre dive levers, which is probably a better way because on others you just have like a plus or a minus, and it is all kind of vague as to um, sort of which is which. Uh, whereas pre dive and dive is a bit more straightforward. Um, in the plus um, like direction, that's usually for improved airflow using the venturi effect um however whenever it's out of your mouth switch it to the negative or the pre-dive um setting just to interrupt a um uh a free flow and the uh, the airflow inside of the second stage and dial that uh, dial a breath um the breathing adjustment in as much as possible so it's really hard for it to uh, to free flow you can still breathe from it 
uh, it would just be a little bit hard to uh, to breathe from. And uh, and then if you do have to switch to it, then you can open it up. Um, but it's, I suppose, it's about as much of an issue as it is um, the, a, a normal Opto setup. Um, but yeah, I'd uh, I'd ditch that uh, that bulb like holder thing. That's um, that's going to be one of the main uh, reasons why it um, uh, it free flows. And uh, yeah, just gently fill it with water, but um, at the beginning of the dive, and it's far less likely to free flow. Uh, otherwise, yeah, get it serviced. Uh, G G Y L E S McLean Giles. Giles McLean, I'm going to say, um, says, Hi, Mark, since you are an avid twin set diver, yes, uh, what is your opinion on a Nitrox twin set setup? What is your opinion on a Nitrox twin set setup? Um, I'm pro Nitrox. Um, what is your opinion on a Nitrox twin set setup? I mean, my, my twins are, are Nitrox cleaned uh, when they go in for their um, uh, their inspections and their, their tests. Um I, I just find it more like flexible. You can always get them filled with air. It just has to be clean air. Um, I don't. I don't know what else you're asking with the with the question. Since you're an avid twin set diver, what is your opinion on a nitrox twin set setup? I mean, I have manifolded um, twin twelves, and uh, and everything's O2 cleaned. Uh, it costs. A, heck of a lot more than um than just a, a regular um uh, cylinder test but yeah at least i can have any nitrox mix in it as i like um and it usually means that if you're just having air in it it has to go through an extra filter again it, it costs a little bit extra but it uh, it does ensure that it's a little bit cleaner um i'm not entirely sure on the question but uh, yes i'm i'm pro nitrox um uh scuba george 93 says i would be uh more than happy to receive any of these from christmas oh it's my top 10 scuba gift ideas video uh you mentioned clothing i really like that fourth element vest that you're wearing but i can't find it on their website uh do you know where i can find one um yeah it, it's if it's a fourth element vest it's probably my oh, i think it's called the core um it's it's old. Um, they they stopped making it a while back, and I think the new version is it called the X Core. Um, it's less. So the the current version the um, of the the core, uh, whatever they they call it, is just a, a vest. So you you slip it on, and uh, and there's no zippers or buttons or anything. It, you just slip it on, and it, it's made to keep your chest and your tummy warm basically your, your real core um but years and years ago um back when i was um when i was uh, an instructor um they had something called the sub x undersuit uh and that was a separate jacket and salopettes um and I actually have a set somewhere. I wear it every now and then in the winter time uh, because it's it's <laughs> nice and warm. And the jacket itself, whilst being an undersuit, it looks like a, a surface jacket. I mean, your your left shoulder has the um uh, the like that like mesh material for airflow around your dump valve. Um, but otherwise, it kind of looks like a, a wintry jacket kind of thing. Um, and they made like a sleeveless version of it. Um, sort of. I think there was a almost a generation between when they discontinued sub X and then they brought out the core. But it's um, yeah, it's specifically designed again to um to like wear and bolster the insulation over your core, your torso. Um, but I just tend to wear it as a day to day uh, like gilet. Um. It's got the same materials as like their Arctic undersuits and whatnot. Uh, it's got pockets all over it. Um, I don't use the crotch strap um, for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, I don't think they make it anymore. Uh, you might be able to find one uh, knocking around. Um, if you search online, I think it is just the, the fourth element core. But you are going to find a lot of the, the new version, which 
you'd look a little bit odd um, walking around town in that. Um, yeah, it's um, just one of those things that I've picked up throughout the years and um, they, they don't make it anymore, unfortunately. Uh, GMAC44 asks, uh, I'm in a transition st uh, equipment transition stage and wondered if you could provide an overview of features, benefits, and or negatives of changing to side-mounted twin tanks versus a twin tank setup uh, on a suitable pad plate and wing, uh, which is an easier setup regarding buoyancy and trim, and finally, which setup is more universal and safer when wreck diving? Um, I mean, the, the most... I always see side mount as the flexible option uh, because your cylinders aren't rigidly attached to you. Uh, so if you want to, uh, and I've certainly done this, uh, you can take your cylinders down to the water's edge or attach them onto a line and lower them uh, sort of over the deck into the water, get into the water with your BCD and your fins and everything like all set up and then clip your, cyl uh, yeah, your cylinders on in the water. Um, it's much more civilized. Uh, it's a lot harder in colder waters if you've got big clunky gloves um, because you, you've got to find the D-rings and all that kind of stuff, and it's just extra um, stuff to uh, just kind of find. But for, like, flexibility and, like, carrying equipment backwards and forwards, because twins, twins are bolted together, and, one, it does make them one individual unit, uh, so it's it's just one thing you have to, like move around but it's one really heavy really awkward thing that you need to move around um once they're in the water you don't really have to think about them um with tw uh, with side mounted cylinders uh the more you breathe one side down it's going to change the buoyancy of that cylinder so if you're breathing the same gas mix on both sides then I mean, I was taught to breathe, uh, I think I was taught to breathe 50 bar on one, then switch sides, breathe 50 bar on the other, and kind of alternate so that their buoyancy didn't shift too much. Um, twins have a, um, a benefit in that, if they're manifolded at least, you're breathing from both of them simultaneously. Uh, one, so you don't have to switch second stages during the dive, uh, but two, you you can use a bit more gas basically because when each cylinder on your uh, on your side mount reaches 50 bar then that's kind of it but with a, a twin set because they're both connected it, it takes a little bit longer if that makes sense uh, which is uh, which is an easier setup regarding buoyancy and trim uh, arguable um, I mean, easier, probably twins, just because they're literally bolted onto your back and then you just figure it out. Whereas with, um, uh, with side mount, you have a lot more variables, um, like where the D-rings are attached on the, um, uh, on the strap at the bottom of the cylinder and, uh, and how long the, uh, the like choker is and things. So there's, there's a lot of like variables and where the D-ring is put on your, on your harness, all those kind of things. Whereas with a, a twin set, it's just like, right, where, where's the weight on you and, uh, and where can we move it to? Um, which setup is more universal and safer when wreck diving? I mean, side mounts, is the more obvious choice just because it's more flexible. Um, if you're penetrating shipwrecks, then yeah, it's, it's a bit of a no brainer because you can literally take off each cylinder, pass it through a restriction. Uh, if you're trapped in the shipwreck and you need to get out of a hole um, with a twin set, if they don't fit, they don't 